I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Covenant Living Broadcast. Praise God. I'm David Weeder. This is my beautiful wife, Lynn Weeder. This is her twirly little <laughs> ring that we were talking about a little bit ago. <laughs> anyway, hey, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you got your, your coffee made or your tea or your glass of iced tea in case you want to cool off in this, uh, <laughs> this uh, summertime. It is August, you know, so uh, you may want that glass of iced water or iced tea instead of coffee. I don't know. But anyway, grab that. Grab your Bible, grab your notebook, because we're going to get into some things. We're going to spend the next several broadcasts. Um, actually, this this message came out of um, our July partner letter. A lot of the material uh, from these broadcasts and that and that I preach uh, in different various places come from praying over our partners and praying over the monthly partner letter that I send to our partners. And uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's an amazing thing to me because mentally I can have no idea what I'm going to write. <laughs> and and uh, there's even been times where I sit down to write it and I say, Laura, I have no idea what I'm <laughs> gonna write here. And I start praying in the spirit and all of a sudden he'll, he may just give me a title and as I pray it just expands or he may give me um, the foundation verse you know, and I'll look over there and read it, and all of a sudden, the, the rest of it just kind of explodes in my spirit, and uh, it's an amazing, <laughs> it's an amazing process, and it's all for you if you're well, a partner. And that's kind of like speaking with tongues. Sometimes people think if they're going to speak in tongues, there's this full thing that they hear inside them, and when you start speaking in tongues, a lot of times you'll hear one syllable, yeah. and when you say that, you'll hear the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Yeah, absolutely. That's, a, that's exactly true. That's perfect illustration. So so this next uh, four broadcasts, actually, are going to be on uh, a particular aspect where the Holy Ghost just kind of pulled the curtain back and unveiled uh, some things in the Scripture about how Satan works in getting things accomplished in people's lives. And uh, it's 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 actually quite simple <laughs> once you look at it, but it's the it's the the process of looking at it, and you go, oh, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> and once you know it, then you can address it, right? You know. And so that's that's what we're going to be doing. So let's start with a word of prayer, Father. Oh, we're so grateful for the the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher of the church. He is the teacher of the church, and I'm thankful for the the broadcast messages that you've given to us for uh, these upcoming weeks. And um, I'm just I'm just in awe, as, as always. I just kind of walk around with my eyes wide at what you're doing throughout the earth and what you're doing through this ministry and so many others that, that we know and are familiar with. And we give you the praise and the glory for every life touched, every person healed, every, every financial life increased and expanded, every family that's put back together, every, every impact that you have in every person's life. And I thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of it. We're grateful and we're honored and we give you the glory and honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I want to I wanna remind you, all of our broadcasts, everything, is on our website, davidweeder.org. Or for that matter, you can go to mm. davidweeder.com. It all goes <laughs> to the same spot. But everything, every broadcast is on there. It's there for you. It's there so that you can go and you go back and you go back and you listen to it. Because every time you listen to a message, I know it's true, even after all these years of listening to Brother Hagin, you know, you can go back and listen to a message and you're like, oh, hey, I didn't hear that in that mm -hmm. way before. You know, and a lot of it has to do with your growth as well, right. you know, because you can hear something now and you're dealing with a particular situation 
and it, it ministers to you where you can deal with that situation. And then you're growing and you're growing and five years down the road, mm -hmm. you're looking at it and you go, oh, hey. There's a whole other room. Yeah, it was just like, oh, wow, that's just, I never saw that before. And it's just, it's marvelous. <laughs> the word of God is multifaceted and, and changing and it goes back to that illustration about the mountain. You know, you climb up a mountain on one side and you see these trees and those rocks and this stream and you climb up on the side, other side and you see that tree and these rocks and those streams and which one's right? Well, they all are. It just depends on what you need and what you're looking at at the time, praise God. All right. <clears throat> We're gonna be looking at and examining an aspect of fear and faith and how Satan appears accomplishes the act of bringing fear into people's lives. And so you remember, I'll briefly touch on this, but you remember from broadcasts in the past, and, and that's another thing, let me remind you, we've been, the Lord, at the Lord's very, very specific instruction, we have been teaching on fear since the beginning of March. He told me, at the end of last year to relaunch the war on fear. And so we've been teaching, oh my goodness, it's <laughs> just been detailed. Well, looking at this aspect of it, looking at that aspect of it, looking at this strategy, looking at that answer since March. And this is another, <laughs> this is another key that we're gonna be looking at. And so I remind you that fear <laughs> and faith are the exact same spiritual force. They operate by the same spiritual laws. They are the same force going in the opposite direction, producing the opposite results. And I've used this illustration so many times, and it's just, it's so simple and so clear, it's, it's hard for me to get to another illustration. But it is the, it is the fact that the fear of a dangerous animal, say a poisonous snake or a shark or a lion or whatever, <laughs> whatever is dangerous to you in your thinking, the fear of that animal is your faith in that animal's ability to harm or kill you. That's what it is. It's faith in the destruction. All right. So this is just so so simple and easy to see. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to get away from that illustration. So. Once we know that, and once we know that it's the same spiritual force and that it operates by the same principles, a lot of times you can look at the principle of faith and you can uncover and unwrap that element where fear is concerned. And so one of the things that we know about faith that we see in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, faith doesn't come any other way. You know, there used to be a lot of people, well, anyway, I guess there really still is, a lot of people that think faith is developed through trials and tribulations. No, it's not what the word says. The word says it comes by hearing the word. So that's how it comes. It doesn't come any other way, all right? So once we know that, then we know that fear comes by the word of Satan, the word and lies of the devil. That's how fear comes. It doesn't come any other way, okay? So faith comes by the word of God, fear comes by the word of the devil or the lies of the devil, however you wanna state that, because he is the father of liars, there is no truth in him. And so let's look at an illustration of this. And we're gonna go over to 1 Samuel. Let me change swords here. This is my uh, New Covenant sword right here. And uh, I have to go over here to my Old Covenant, my First Covenant sword. And uh, we're gonna look at, and, and everybody's familiar with it. Oh, hot off the press. Hot off the press this <laughs> morning in my prayer time. I never saw this before because I was never looking for it before, but I love it when the Lord just goes <laughs> <laughs> I was I was going back over the story of David and Goliath, which is what we're getting ready to look at here, where fear is concerned, but I'm looking back over this story, 
And I was thinking about giants, and I was thinking about, uh, when I thought about giants, I remember something my spiritual father has said, you know, about uh, Psalm 23. And it says, though, shall, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And he usually, you know, follows that up by saying, well, of course not. Your God's the biggest thing in the valley. This battle between David and Goliath happened in, in the, the valley. valley. The Philistines were in one mountain, the Israelites were in another mountain, and they were fighting. It specifically said, it, it, it says it right here in the book, mm. <laughs> that they fought in the valley. Well, you think when David wrote Psalm 23? He wasn't thinking about it. Oh, yeah. man, he's talking from experience. Though I walk through this valley, bless God, my God is the biggest thing in the valley. It don't matter how big that giant is. There's no extra charge for that. That's just hot off the press this morning. Want to share it with you? <laughs> okay. So now back to the back to the message at hand here. First Samuel chapter 17, and we're going to begin in uh, verse eight and read down through verse 11. And he, Goliath, stood and cried. He cried unto the armies of Israel. I'm, I'm, I'm being very specific here, and I'm going to draw your attention to some words. He stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said, said unto them. Now, how, how does faith and fear come? By words. Words of God bring faith. Words of the devil bring fear. Okay? Now, pay attention here. He said unto them, why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine and you servants of Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall you be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Now look at verse 11. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. They heard the words of the devil, fear came. That's how it works. Now, look on down through here and we see from verses 16. Verse 16 says, and the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. All right, so you got the morning news and the evening news for 40 days. Look at verse 23. Verse 23 says, And as he talked with them, this is David talking, Behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spoke according to the same words. So we got the same words on the morning news, the same new, the same words in the evening news for 40 days have been going on the same thing, the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. Words of the devil, words of the devil, words of the dare. Fear is coming, fear is coming, fear is coming. But now let's look at an additional strategy of the devil. Look at the very next verse in verse 24. And all of the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. They went from radio to TV? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Goliath was nine foot nine. Yeah. Big, trained warrior since his youth. Somebody had to carry his, it took a man to carry his shield before him. This one big, awesome, tough looking dude. So the, there's a saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. So fear comes by hearing the words and lies of the devil. It doesn't come any other way. But if he can get a picture in front of you, it amplifies and magnifies the effects of those words. This is another strategy that the devil uses. The words brought the fear, but the picture magnified the effect. Now, to, to 
kind of reinforce that and give you an example of it. What if Goliath would have stepped out there, nine, all nine foot nine of his big bad self, would have stepped out there and said, I want Saul and all of Israel to know that I have come to believe in the great God of Israel. And I want you to know, I will fight your fights and I will win your battles. You let, hey, anybody speaks out against Israel, they're gonna have to deal with me. Are you kidding me? There would have been joy, rejoicing, and partying all through the land of Israel. <laughs> Look at the champion that we have. Mm -hmm. The picture didn't change, but the words were different. It was the words that brought the fear, mm -hmm. not the picture. But once the words were in place, the picture magnified the effects. Of the, okay, well, I hadn't thought about this before. The same thing would have happened if there had been some five foot two guy walked out there and said the same words that Goliath said. It wouldn't have been as big of a problem. The size, the picture, the image amplified well, the words the of fear. Well, the deal with the smaller person is they would have thought, oh, I'm big enough to handle that myself and not had to rely on God's power to do it. Because in the natural, Goliath was too big for a single man to handle. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was wanting. He wasn't wanting the armies of Israel versus the armies of Philistine. He wanted man to man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. Now, but he didn't expect David. Right. <laughs> Uh, something that David did, well, we're gonna, well, we'll talk about this in, <laughs> we'll talk about this in future broadcasts as well, but I, I, it's, it's worth mentioning now because the words and the picture had Goliath and Satan's intended effect on everybody except David. Why? Remember, words of Satan bring Fear, words of God bring faith, okay? So hold your place. Well, actually, we're kind of done there in, in for, for now. We're done in here. Go over to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. And I want you to see something. This is the longest chapter in the Bible. And I want to look, I'm not, we're not, obviously it's the longest chapter in the Bible. We're not going to read through every verse, but I just want to, I want to read enough so that you know, look at verse one, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Well, the law was the word. The word is the law. So that's another way of saying the word of God. Verse two, blessed are they that keep his testimonies. That's another word of saying the word. Another way of saying the word. Verse three, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Verse four, thou has commanded us to keep thy precepts. That's the word. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. That's the word. Out of this entire, entire psalm, there are 176 verses, and, and David talks about the word in 171 of the 176 verses. Now, what do you think is in him? Faith. Faith in his God. Faith in the word. And then we're going to come back and deal with something else that it created in here at a, in a future broadcast here. But I want you to see that the picture of Goliath right there standing in front of him took those words, amplified, magnified, and paralyzed a nation. Mm -hmm. Sound familiar? That's, hey, that's what's happened over the last couple of years. They took I'm getting way ahead of myself. <laughs> they took the words of fear 
on the morning news, the nighttime news, and 24-7 through social media and everything else, 24-7 on, on the, now there's news, news networks that are dedicated to just 24-7 news. And they said the same words you could have listened to for an hour the first day and just done the rest of the broadcast yourself because they just repeated it, repeated it, repeated it, repeated it, repeated it, repeated it, repeated it. And then they got pictures. They got a picture of the virus, what it looked like. They got a picture of the most dire looking circumstances they could find, mm -hmm. the worst deaths that they could find, and they put the pictures up to go with the words. Because, you know, they otherwise they could have just had someone come up there and read, you know, X number of people died today, and the sun came up in the east and set in the west, and life goes on. And, well, you know, whatever. But no. <laughs> you got to put the picture. X number of people died today, and you're going to put up the picture of all the hospitals full. All of the, the picture of lungs or pictures of, you know, people dying and, and things like that because it amplified the words. Well, and now we've got the same thing going on with the economy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Any different way they can figure to put up, they're going to put pictures of gas pump prices up. They're going to put pictures of grocery store prices. They put prices. people living in tents. People living in tents, people living in cars. Whatever pictures they can find to amplify the words of fear and the words of destruction and the words of death that Satan is trying to get in to the communities and into the lives of believers as well as unbelievers. And uh, sadly to say, the believers are falling for it mm -hmm. because they're listening to and looking at the pictures of Satan instead of listening to and looking at the pictures of God and what he's provided, okay? Now, in the time we have remaining, I wanna go ahead and introduce this next part uh, turn over to the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers, and we are going to uh, chapter 13. And we're going to read some considerable amount of, of Scripture here. So, like I said, we're just going to introduce this, and then we'll be uh, picking up here next week. At Numbers 13, we're going to start in verse 25 and just read down through the end of the chapter, actually. And they returned, this is, you know the story, this is where um, the spies went to check out the, the promised land and then came back with their report. Um, now, now remember what we did uh, when, Goliath, when we were looking at Goliath and we noticed words like Goliath said, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so we're, we're going to be looking, look, keep, keep, keep an eye out for those type of things here. 25, and they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all of the congregation and showed them fruit of the land. And they told him and said, we came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land in the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled all the people before Moses and said, Hey, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel. How did they bring up that report? Saying, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature, and there we saw giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. They said it, and they said it, and they said it. They gave the evil report of unbelief. We can't do this. No. When God said at the beginning of this chapter, I have given you the land, this is the land I want you to go. I've given it to you. Well, they said it, and they said it, and they said it, and it brought fear, and it brought fear, and it brought fear. 
and we don't have time to look at the <laughs> next part of this. <laughs> but uh, it's just, you've got to get it. It works by the same principles. Wor the words bring the fear. You get a picture in front of your face and it amplifies the fear. And it's, a, it's, it's kind of a down, downhill spiral. Yeah. Because the more you listen to it, the more the pictures are there, the more the pictures are there, the more you listen to it and the fear comes and it gets, and then you want to find out more fear. You want to find out more words. You want to find out more, and it just, it just goes and goes and goes until you, it takes some dedicated immersion in the word and putting other pictures in front of your face to get back out of it once you let yourself get entangled in it. And that's kind of the way it works. <laughs> hey. I'm, I'm telling you, I would want you to stay with us because I've got something that is very important and then we'll be back to talk to you about it right after this. DavidWeeder.org. Discover the calling and mission of our ministry. Get to know us and the vision God has given us. Watch the Covenant Living broadcast and connect to our YouTube channel. Consider becoming a partner and supporting our outreaches. Learn about our teaching tools and resources. DavidWeeder.org, your connection for all of this and much more. Hey, now, I'm just being serious here. That's, that is, that's mm -hmm. like Grand Central Station for David Weeder Ministries. I mean, you just go to the website. You can, you can read blogs if you like to do that if that's if that's the way you that you absorb information better then hey take advantage of that you can listen you can just you can click on the listen tab and you can listen to the podcast and anywhere you are where i mean there's 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 connections there where you can click and you can get it on apple itunes you can get it on spotify you can get it on all kinds of podcast platforms that I didn't even know existed <laughs> until we started putting it on and of course you can click and watch on the um on YouTube and watch every broadcast that we've ever done and get caught up and just immerse yourself 24 seven in the word. You can find um, where where and when we are on Dish and DirecTV and Spectrum Cable and and uh, VTN in Arkansas. If you're in, if you live in this happen to live in the state of Arkansas and you've got broadcasts and just find VTN, we're on there. I mean, hey, Go read, come read about, check out the upcoming events. I'm going to be in Juarez coming up in, in October and, and you can find out information about there. It's there for you. Take advantage of it, praise God. Hey, remember this. God is always, always for you. He is never against you. He loves you. We love you. And Jesus it is Lord. Lord. Thank you partners and friends for helping make this broadcast possible. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. You can also listen to our broadcast on iTunes. For more information about our ministry, contact us at davidweeder.org or call us at 1-800-988-5380. Join us again next time on the Covenant Living Broadcast.